um, is in two parts. The basic research, which don't do much in India, um, very expensive research. All over the world, billions of dollars are being spent on battery technology. But a lot of applied research, applied engineering is done. And uh, the demand on the battery today basically are, one is the electric vehicles, movement, tra transport. The other one, other end is bulk storage, load leveling, you know, capturing this. We have been talking about uh, wind turbines losing their energy because no grid can evacuate. So is there a sufficiently big enough battery? So all along the uh, all along the research or the findings have been on the biggest storage, fastest charge, fastest discharge, lowest cost, high energy efficiency means if you put in 100 kilowatt hours, how much kilowatt hours you can take out of that, and of course the price. So the need from a single uh, unit is, or from drawing from all the sites, everybody wants a cheap and the best. However, uh, although much has been achieved, but not everything can be had in the same battery. So therefore, uh, you know, we look at application-wise, what is best for that? So primarily, you know, people have been talking about lithium iron batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries. You know, uh, for the last 100 years, 150 years, lead acid battery has been there everywhere, car starting, um, diesel and generator starting, then railways everywhere. But the uh, problem is that we have tried to use it for electric vehicles also. But the weight is too much, you know. We, you carry a lot of load rather than carrying passengers. So therefore, the lookout has been for low, high energy density, high specific energy. How much water you can get in per uh, kg of that battery. So that way lithium ion has proven to be an exceptionally good one. Almost three to four times energy store, I mean, specific energy compared to lead acid batteries. And uh, another advantage is when you have a battery in a vehicle, electric vehicle or a hybrid electric vehicle, you would like to recharge the battery very quickly, 15 minutes. You cannot wait more than that, 30 minutes in a pump, uh, like just like a petrol pump. However, the lead acid batteries have been taking eight hours to charge. So that has been a problem, but lithium ion it's possible to charge almost 70-80% within about an hour, couple of hours. The next big thing that has come up, unknown to us, is bulk storage, huge storage energy of uh, bat, uh, energy in a battery called, this has been researched upon for the last 20 years, but I didn't know it has come up in a big way recently in Japan, sodium sulfur batteries. Um, you know, this can store, this single unit which you are seeing over there is storing two megawatts deliverable for seven hours, means 14 megawatt hours of energy stored in that. And therefore, with a single wind turbine of two megawatts, if you connect it, it can store the whole day's generation and pump it out to the grid any point of time. However, the problem of both these lithium ion and of course, latest is that sodium sulfur, almost 150 megawatts of batteries have been installed, none in India, of course. Uh, I've been talking to CVET, we are talking about finding out ways to get one of those batteries, but very expensive. How expensive? For a two megawatt uh, capsule, they are charging $10 million. That's the cost of technology. But then, essentially, sodium and sulfur are very, not very expensive items. Problem, however, is containment. This sodium sulfur battery operates at 300 degrees centigrade. It, it's a molten salt battery, basically. So therefore, containment is a big issue, and danger of fire and other things are still there. So this is a large unit, 34 megawatts of storage. This one is extremely interesting, which I found recently. The advantage of quick charging, quick discharging, as you need in uh, electric vehicles, is available in lead acid storage batteries. I didn't know. It has been discovered. It's called the ultra battery. Here, what they do is, here, what they do is, instead of a negative plate, they have a negative plate and a carbon electrode, where, which works as an ultra capacitor inside the battery. So very fast, about three times, four times, five times charging you can do. You can pick it up. And another advantage is, which the scientists have not been able to find out yet, 
if the battery works in a low state of energy, you know, full not, not fully charged, normal batteries will get sulfated and damaged. And that's where all the solar batteries and the wind batteries of our grid are failing, basically. You have a partial charge, gets sulfated, does not take up charge. This battery does not suffer from any, any of those problems. However, all these technologies are outside India. What we could do is inside India is, and I've been part of, you know, I've worked in Excite, in design, development, production, everything. Um, lead acid batteries are very comfortable we are with. You know, we are manufacturing them here. Very stable, does not cause accidents. Only problem is it cannot be quickly charged, quickly discharged. However, a recent, uh, not recent, we did it about 10 years back. A lead acid battery which takes eight hours to charge can be charged in two hours or one and a half hours if you just do pulse charging. How, how you do it? Quickly, you know, put five times the power and let the, as soon as the voltage goes up, you cut down to charging, uh, discharging, so that the voltage again comes down. No, and don't allow gas formation. And that's why where you require a lot of electronics. So by pulse charging, a battery can be charged very quickly within maybe an hour, hour and a half, almost 70-80%. Finally, if the, <clears throat> if Muhammad does not go to the mountain, the mountain comes to Muhammad. So, we developed a boat and uh, later on I came to know globally in Europe, a lot of electric boats are operating. The advantage with a boat using a battery is, you know, when you put a heavy weight in the boat, the propeller which drives the boat, it goes down a little lower in the water. And as you know, water as you go down has more density. Upper water is low density. So the, if the propeller runs in a little deeper water, it has got much more efficiency in cutting the water and driving it through. So the weight of the battery acts as a ballast, you know, and, and the boat propulsion is much better. So therefore, we suggested this to Singapore authorities and Within next two, three years in Singapore, the bum boats which used to operate in the, from boat key, about 50 volts converted to battery, battery powered systems. So this is uh, in here, we have also developed few, quite a few battery powered boats. I just wanted to show you the slides, this video lastly, so that you can have an idea how it runs. And it runs pretty fast. This is a boat in Kerala. It was running by diesel. A very vague picture, uh, not very sharp. So we converted to it to electric motor with battery power, and it runs at about eight kilometers per hour. Uh, that um, that uh, um, wildlife uh, sanctuary, I forget the name. So this is a battery powered boat. Ex I mean, use of a battery for running an electric vehicle. It's also a vehicle. And then there's another one. This one was developed and it uh, was tested in Ravindra Sarovar at Calcutta and then transferred to Chilka Lake in Orissa. So this also runs at about five knots. Five knots means something like eight to nine kilometers per hour. A fairly good speed. It, it runs on a five horsepower motor, electric motor. And today, when we did it, you know, 10 years back, proper AC motors, which can run on batteries, with uh, permanent magnets, you know, that's what those were not there. Today, new dimension magnets are there. So if we can do that today, it will have double the range, double the speed, and much lower battery power. And here, the advantage with this lead acid battery is more you load the boat, more batteries you put, more energy storage you do, the boat goes down a bit on the water, and it cuts much better, much more efficient. So therefore, applications of a technology which is not usable elsewhere in a much better way. With that, I end my session. Thank you.